Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Divorced Women's Guide podcast. How are you guys doing today? Today's episode is inspired by one of my private clients, actually, because she asked me a really good question, and it was so good that I had to make a podcast episode about it. And so today's episode is understanding the difference between intuition and fear. Now, both of them are very easily confused, and that has to do with the fact that they are both literally experienced in your gut. It is a gut feeling. And unfortunately, when you've gone through divorce, if you're anything like I was, I fell way out of touch with my gut and didn't understand the difference between when it was hitting me upside the head with a two by four, I guess I should say hitting me inside of my gut with a two by four. Um, but we, what ends up happening is that we get so preoccupied with our thoughts and we go into reasoning that it's hard to understand what our gut is telling us when it has a feeling. And I want to talk to you guys about a couple of different ways that you will learn how to distinguish your gut feelings that are based in fear versus gut feelings that signal your intuition is kicking in. Now, in my experience, an intuitive hit tends to feel illogical. It feels weird. It feels odd when you bring your mind to a place where you're analyzing it after the fact. But in the moment, intuition doesn't strike terror in your bones or send adrenaline cursing through you the way that fear does. And the example I'll give is, you know, just remembering back to that night where I realized that my now ex-husband was having an affair. I felt that gut reaction and it wasn't fear. It was, what the hell? Like, how does this even make sense? So it felt very clear in the moment. It felt calm. At the beginning, there wasn't emotion attached to it, right? And it was just like this knowing, like I just knew that I was right. On the flip side, fear is what kicks in your anxiety, that panic attack, worry, right? You're on the hamster wheel in your head. Do you hear the difference? <laughs> So intuition arises as a sense in your body versus fear, which ends up being a thought in your mind. And so fear really doesn't have a single qualm about picking apart an intuitive hit though, right? So that's when your mind is going, well, psh, you're not good enough. You're not smart. You're not pretty to do X, Y, Z. So psh, don't even bother. Okay. Now, did you guys hear the harshness of that tone, right? Fear has this harsh tone and language. And if you also notice your body in that moment, there's almost like this contraction that you feel when you experience those self-doubting thoughts. And when that happens, I invite you guys to sort of picture, you know, ego, your ego is taking the wheel. And in my experience and in the experience that I see with my clients is that when it comes to making decisions, your gut is far more reliable to use as your guide than fear is. Okay. So I'm going to say it again in a different way, but I just said it a little while ago. Fear is saying no in your head and intuition is saying yes in your body. So your gut feeling, your intuition is actually one of the most powerful, powerful tools that you guys have to use for life. And I can tell you guys that from that day moving forward, it is something that I never stop paying attention to. But if you're anything like I was back then, you don't know how to use it effectively. So most of us get these like little internal signals that tell us that there's something more going on in a situation. And yet we tend to tell ourselves that mm, not sure I can trust this feeling. So you ignore it and you just assume you're wrong. And one way this shows up is really, you know, those moments where you tell yourself like, oh, there I go being judgmental again, right? When something doesn't feel right. And you tell yourself, you talk yourself into, you know, oh, Wendy, that's nothing. When you're sure that there is something there, right? That night in the car, I was like, no, there's no way. It cannot be this, but is it? So instead of leaning into the self-trust that says, hey, 
Like this is a sign and I need you to take a step back and become aware, open your eyes. So instead of the self-trust, right, we often brush it aside and we criticize, yet we know that something feels off, right? But then we talk ourselves into like, no, there's no way. That's what I did in the car. I was like, there's no way he would do this. There's no way. That's so not like him. And what I've learned over the last almost six years is that following your intuition comes down to self trust. Self-trust is so incredibly important. It is something that I understand that if you guys have gone through trauma, you know, with your divorce, it impacts you, right? And so what that has done is it has taught us to not trust ourselves. And so many times that happens because we have been for years, if not decades, felt invalidated, okay? And what is invalidated? Well, basically that means that someone is telling you that your inner feelings are wrong, right? So what do we do? Well, we suck it up because, well, I guess we're just wrong, right? You can't possibly be thinking what, or you can't, what it is that you're thinking can't possibly be true, right? Or maybe you're somebody who uh, you were told by a teacher or by a parent, like, oh, you're just being so dramatic, right? Or you've been told like, calm down, right? So when this happens, you learn to not trust yourself or your instincts. So then you stop trusting your entire inner world and you get the message loud and clear of, well, you cannot trust your gut instinct. So you shut down. And when you shut that down, your connection with your deepest self gets shut down. And so you disconnect from your feelings and you stop trusting yourself. So when you can't trust yourself, when you can't trust your inner world, it's no wonder that you can't connect with your intuition. So I invite you guys to answer this question honestly. Do you trust yourself when you have a decision to make? Do you trust your judgment? Here's another question. Do you feel like maybe there's something bigger than yourself that you can fall back on and believe in, right? Your faith, your trust. But what ends up happening is that faith and that trust slowly has been stripped away from those years of conditioning that tells you that mm, can't be trusted, right? Can't trust your inner world. So you guys are probably like, okay, great, Wendy. <laughs> what do I do? Okay. So here's what I know you're doing that are mistakes. Okay. These are the mistakes that you're making. And then I'm going to flip it for you. Okay. So you're discounting your gut feelings. You're making excuses, right? And you come up with reasons that your intuition is wrong. And number three mistake is that you invalidate yourself. Okay. So you're self-sabotaging, right? We're so afraid of being right, or we're afraid of success. That is what we're pushing away. So when we're discounting our intuition as fear, it's actually self-sabotage. Have you ever thought about it that way, right? And so the key way to tell the difference is to feel your feelings, okay? So this is what I'm inviting you guys to do instead. Feel your feelings. Don't discount them, okay? Don't stop feeling. Don't ignore it, okay? When you get that intuitive nudge, something is off, you guys, and there is a good reason for it, okay? And the metaphor that I like to use, and it is exactly how I felt in that moment in the car when I realized that, my, that perhaps this woman caller at 1145 at night was not just a friend, Okay. The metaphor is that it feels like you literally are in a movie that is in slow motion. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that sound familiar? Things are all of a sudden slowing down and yet you're wondering why they're not speeding up, right? And in that slow motion, there's that calm feeling that I was talking about, right? This calm feeling of certainty. Now, fear on the other hand, you guys, is 
fear feels more frantic. It's that anxiety. It's that worry. It's the spinning thoughts. It's that worst case scenario or worst case scenarios, plural, that run through your head. And so what I want you guys to do in order to differentiate between your intuition and your fear is to sit with your emotions, sit with your feelings and get curious about it. What is it about the situation that doesn't feel right? What do I feel in this moment? And give your feeling a voice so that you can actually hear what it is trying to tell you. And only when you look that feeling, right, dead in the eye, okay, you can actually hear what it's saying. And then you're able to collect that data on what the feeling is telling you, right? Feelings are like data. It's information. It is communicating information to you. So when you don't trust your feelings and you're disconnected from them, you are losing out on this entire big source of information that is going to help you on your path. So I invite you guys, don't let your fear hide behind your intuition any longer. Don't narrow in that field of possibility and confine yourself to the limits of what has felt comfortable up into this moment. And what I invite you guys to do instead is to just allow yourself to stretch out under the spaciousness of communication with yourself, of information, of trusting your intuition and growing to your fullest potential that I know that you are capable of. I know it. I see it. You are capable of it. So what are you going to commit to after this episode? What is it that you get to commit to moving forward? Is it that you're going to commit to silencing the fear at any chance that you get? Is it about having awareness of when your intuition is speaking to you? Make that declaration to yourself right now and see how it plays out for the rest of the week. And go so far as to tell me what it is. Let me be your accountability partner in this. So share it with me, wendy at wendysterling.net and share with me what it is that just landed for you in this episode. What was that aha moment? Did you understand the difference between the two? Or perhaps I explained it in a different way to you guys. Either way, I hope that you gained some new knowledge in this episode that you didn't have before that is going to enable you to move forward wherever it is that you guys are in your divorce process. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to join my Facebook group, The Divorce Rehab. And I wish you guys a beautiful rest of your day, sending you all so much love, light, and joy as always. Bye, everybody.